There it is. What's going on, guys? We are live. We are live. Happy Thursday to everybody. Hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. This morning has been extremely, do I dare say, chaotic. It's been very interesting. Oh, let me look here. Let me try to... Now I'm back here messing with the... Hold on. What is going on here? What is going on here? There we go. Here we go. Having some technical difficulties this morning. What's going on, guys? Uh, where was I? Dude, this this is... Um, this has been a very chaotic morning for me. It's been very interesting. Kayleen Frost, happy Thursday to you. Ken Wilson, what's going on, baby? How you doing, man? Dude, Ken fires me up. We need to go get lunch again sometime, bro. My brother, Brandon Vesper. How are you this morning, my friend? Brandon and I, if you guys missed, uh, Brandon and I did a podcast together. When was it, Brandon? Was it last Saturday? Dude, it was so good. It was so good. If you guys need to go back, if you guys don't have the recording, we need to get back in there, and you guys need to go watch that uh, that podcast I did with Brandon Vesper. It was so good. So good. Angel is in the house. Carlin, my friend, how are you? Jim Lee, bro, shoot me a text right now, Jim. Shoot me a text. How come we have not... Dude, we haven't talked in like... Do I dare say years? It's been a hot minute. Dude, I, I, I apologize for the tardiness, guys. I know that I'm like... 26 minutes late on late on this live. Uh, literally, as soon as I was getting ready to hit the live button, I had a gentleman show up at my door. And our, so our, our dishwasher has been broken for a couple of days. Now, I'm not Mr. Fix-It. I'm not like a fix-it kind of guy. I'm not a DIY guy. As a matter of fact, I don't even know really too much about cars. Um. I accept like we're, we're like, you know, where to put the gas in. That's about the extent of my car knowledge. So my expertise better lie in going and figuring out how to make the money so that I can go pay somebody to do this stuff. Who, not how, right? Who, not how. So I had a gentleman come in and try to fix my, try to fix my dishwasher for me. He did amazing. You guys want to hear something crazy? So my dishwasher has been clogged. I can't, I can't tell the last time I had to hand wash dishes. So I've been out here hand washing dishes. I, I make it sound like I'm roughing it, right? I've been out here roughing it, just hand washing dishes for like four days now. But I finally was able to get somebody out here because the holidays and all that kind of stuff uh, to come in and fix my dishwasher. And let me tell you guys, I, I just want to share with you that experience real quick because I'm really in this moment and there's just so much growth that has gone, that, that I have undergone over the last, I, I, I would even just even, even in the last year, last year has been so much growth from just the, the way that I perceive money, uh, the scarcity that I used to have in my mindset. Um, a year ago, we had somebody come out of Alaska is super cold. In case, in case it wasn't obvious alaska is super cold during the winters and my well froze up a year ago had to have somebody come out and uh go and and fix my well and so they they fixed it and they came in and then they gave me the bill and jokingly kind of you kind you know how you know how like you joke when you're like half serious but you know anyway i did one of those things and let me share something with you guys because that was kind of like the the scarcity mindset, Jesse. This was two years ago, actually. I think I said last year. It was two years ago. Two years ago in January. And my well froze up. And they gave me the bill for it. And like, I half joking, was like, holy torpedo. Like, this is this is like a mortgage. This is a couple mortgage payments, right? It's like six months worth of mortgage payments. And then I want to share, 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 share something with you guys really quick. Because... It really, as soon as I, as soon as I said that, like hearing myself jokingly, even though I was joking, I was, I was kind of half serious, but, um, I caught myself after I said that and I had this huge epiphany and I kind of want to talk about it for a second because I think a lot of people, they, they, they act and they execute 
in their business on the person that they think they are right now. And I used to do the same thing. That was me just two years ago. The way that I execute was based on the person that I thought that I was right then and there. And guys, as soon as I half jokingly said it to the guys as they handed me the bill, holy cow, this is, this is a couple mortgage payments right here or something to that effect. I don't remember exactly what I said. It was something to that effect though. As soon as I heard myself say that, I was like, oh my gosh, Jesse, what the F are you doing? Do you know who you, who you are? Do you know who you want to become? Would the billionaire version of Jesse say some dumb shit like that? Would you be so scarcity minded that even in a joking manner, you would say something like that? And it was such a great reminder to execute um, differently, to think differently, to communicate differently. I'm sure you guys have gotten that before. Maybe a car broke down. Maybe something went wrong with your guys' house and then you got the bill for it and your first thought was like, ooh, that one hurt. And as soon as something goes wrong, something else goes wrong. I mean, I've got like a laundry list of things going on, like things in, like the dishwasher needed one. My truck has a check engine light that came on. Uh, the car and our, uh, the heater core in our car has got to be replaced. Like the old Jesse would have like noticed all these things going wrong and been like, oh my gosh, like why, why is all this stuff going wrong? Why is it happening to me? And then I would get really self-critical. I think, man, may, maybe God is punishing me. Maybe, um, you know, and I, and I start kind of throwing these excuses out and I starting to figure out that over the, especially over the last couple of years, that's just life, man. That's just life. And part of how we perceive life is, is life is happening. This, this is where I really started to understand that life is happening, uh, for us and not to us. And I just had somebody come in and fix my dishwasher. They charged me $200 to fix it. And guys, it was, it was a piece of eggshell that was clogging the entire damn thing that was cop that was keeping it from draining. You believe that it was a freaking eggshell. The guy was in and out in 15, 15, 20 minutes. It cost me 200 bucks, dude. I exercised so much gratitude paying him 200, even though it cost it took him 15 minutes to come and unclog that. It's probably even something I could have done, right? I could have, I could have, if it had, I know how to do it, but Here's the cool thing about this, about this thing is, um, being able to acknowledge those things and those, those opportunities for growth make all the freaking difference. Brandon over here, Brandon said, pay for the expertise, not the work, dude, 100%. You pay for the expertise and just like, just like, uh, just like wholesalers or literally anybody. Like I remember, I remember telling friends and family when I started getting into this, I'm like, dude, you guys got to get into wholesaling. Wholesaling is sick. And their first thing was like, why would somebody on earth pay you $20,000 just to bring them a deal? It's for the same thing, guys. It's for convenience. We're paying for convenience. We're paying for the expertise. So I am grateful, so grateful to be able to pay somebody $200 to come remove an eggshell so that I can wash my dishes. That's one of the things that uh, that's on my list. Um, of who not housed this year. I'd like to hire a personal, um, I'd like to hire two things. I'd like to get a nanny that I pay on salary this year. And I would like to hire a personal um, assistant. So those are two things that's on my list, but I have never been so grateful to hand somebody $200 for 15 minutes worth of work because of how much time, energy, and effort that it saved me. Dude, I tore my dishwasher apart two or three nights ago I mean, I was messing with that thing for an hour trying to figure out what the hell's going on and how to take all these parts and stuff off. And you should see me with Ikea stuff, dude. They come out, they, 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 you know, we buy something from Ikea and I've got all these parts and I like finished building the project and I still got like, you know, like 10, 10 spare parts. I'm like, oh, I don't need these. We can throw these away. <laughs> That's me, man. That's me. So I am so humbled and grateful, uh, to be able to pay somebody for their expertise and allow me to be able to, you know, come in here and do a live and get back doing what I love doing, what I'm just naturally good at doing. And so 
Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate all you guys being here. Thank you for all the comments. This is really awesome. We got some awesome things going on this, this uh, year, guys. Um, we have a brand new, we've, we've pivoted how we are doing a lot of our curriculum and the things going on inside of our growth co. Uh, there's just tons and tons of iterations. I mean, that's what business is. As a matter of fact, for those of you guys who don't know, our, <clears throat> I don't know if you call it a slogan. I guess you could maybe call it a slogan. But our slogan for the Growth Co., maybe you guys haven't even seen this yet, is don't drop the mic. Now, let me explain why it's don't drop the mic. The three pillars that serve as the foundations for our business is mindset, iterations, and community. So Mike, M-I-C, like a microphone, that is the acronym for Mindset, Iterations, and Community. It is also very symbolic because as we step out from being the hustler in our business, as we step out from you know, doing, being the person that's, that's working in our business and not on our business, we, we make that transition from being the hustler to being the CEO to being that leader. There's a voice that's involved with that. There is growth that is involved with that. The way that you communicate, the way that you think, the way that you share information with others, there's a transition that has to happen. So you metaphorically, there's that leadership component where we have a microphone. And being able to be that person to bring people together and bring people into your business and to be able to leverage those relationships and have all these clarity and do all these things. That's what this whole thing is all about. And as your business iterates, it becomes better and better and better. And same thing with, uh, same thing with our business. And I'll kind of want to get into that a little bit, um, a little bit here this morning. I'm not sure how many people have heard the amazing news, but last quarter was such a phenomenal year. Talking about the amount of growth that I have personally gone through. So for those of you guys who don't know, I did 14 years in the Air Force, 14 years active duty. And I think, in my humble opinion, in my experience, the leaders that come out of the military versus anywhere else are completely unparalleled. So you can imagine the amount of training and leadership opportunities that come about from being in the Air Force. As a matter of fact, my friend Brandon Vesper, who's in the comments, Brandon and I um, wrote a bunch of leadership curriculum that the Air Force still uses today. Now, I know a lot of you guys are here because you guys want to hear how to make $50,000 a month. That's what we're going to get to. But I want to give you guys some context. So... <clears throat> I have iterated in my business um, frequently over the years, in my real estate business. I have iterated and iterated and iterated and iterated. And each time you iterate, it's the same reason why you can get somebody who loses all their money in, in lottery winnings, and then they never get it back. And that's the same reason why you can have a very successful individual, entrepreneur, CEO, businessman, lose all their money and almost gain it back instantaneously. It's because they've iterated. They, they know that, oh, I can't do that. It must be this choice. And they make it back and then some almost instantly in a lot of, um, a lot of instances. And I have done a lot of that myself. I've been very, very intentional both Chris and I have been very intentional with iterating our business, figuring out what's working and what's not working and how do we improve and how do we go bigger and how do we go better and how do we build more relationships and how do we build you know, more intentional relationships. And I'm going to give you guys some very specific examples of what I'm talking about so that you guys get some ideas, right? Because if we want to do something we've never done, then we have to think in ways that we never have. In order to, in order to do that, we, the only way we can do that is with other information, with sharing other ideas. 
That's why this exists. That's why we're doing this live right now. And I want to give you guys some very, very specific stuff so you guys have context and you guys have some ideas as we kind of make our way down this live, okay? So I'll give you a real specific example. And you guys, and this is just one example out of about a million that you can use. So when Chris and I first got together as business partners, this was June 1st of 2022. So this was 18 months ago. And we didn't know how well we were going to work together as business partners. We didn't know what our roles or responsibilities were going to be. We didn't know our business plan. We didn't, um, we, we didn't know anything. But what we did know was that we both very much shared a similar mindset. And because of that mindset, we acknowledged that, hey, you know what? There's something here. There's something that we could be doing together. And... We said, hey, you know what? I don't know what all this looks like, but just in an effort to see what it looks like to be able to work together, let's help as many people get their first deal as we can. And so that's what we set out doing. So we completely filled up our Calendly. If you guys have a Calendly account, um, make sure you're using it correctly. Do not use your Calendly account um, and just use it absentmindedly for when people want to talk to you. Be intentional with it. Fill that account up. And that's exactly what we did. We took about two weeks. We planned out our Calendly. We planned out our availability. We planned out all these things. Terry says, I don't. Terry, download a Calendly today, bro. Okay? We took two weeks. And we said, all right, we're going to do nothing in our business. We're not going to call any sellers. We're not going to do shit. Like literally, guys, nothing. Every second of our day Every ounce of time, energy, and effort that we had was spent on trying to fill our Calendly up for the next 60 days. So when you wake up and that's what you're, that's your only thing that you're focusing on, you get so much done. So much done. For those of you guys who are trying to multitask and balance things, it is, stop doing that. Stop doing that. I've already done that. I want you guys to... If you guys have a pen and paper, I'll take you through a quick exercise. I, I, I know I want to make sure that this live, you guys get as much tactical and, and uh, hands-on um, uh, I want to make sure that you that this live is packed with everything that you guys need in order to get you to a place where you can make $50,000 a month. So I'm not one of those guys to just explain something to you or just tell you, Hey, this is, this is, this is the answer. Go figure it out. I need to make sure that you guys have context because that's where all the weight for what you should be doing is carried. Okay. I want you guys to write a, like, if you guys have a pen and paper, write this, write this with me. Let's write, um, I love it when it rains. Okay, write it, write it, write a sentence that says, I love it when it rains. Now, right below that, I want you to write another sentence that says, I don't know, I hate Alaska when it's super cold. Okay, now if you were to time yourself writing those two sentences, if you didn't time yourself, probably should have prefaced with that, go, go time yourself. Time yourself writing those two sentences. Start the stopwatch and write, I love it when it rains, and then right below it, write a sentence that says, I hate Alaska when it is super cold and then time yourself. Okay. Now here's why multitasking is not a good idea. Here's why I said, if you have a Calendly, then one of the best things you can do is to not do anything else. Start removing all sorts of stuff off your plate. Do you know, do you realize that actually 90% 90 to 90 to hundred percent of your results is only by about 20% of the things that you do or think? Think about that for a second. So while you're, while you're noodling on that, 
if you timed yourself, I don't know, let's say it took you guys eight seconds to write those two sentences. Now, here's what I want you to do. So we have our two, our two sentences right here, right? Now, what you did, you wrote one sentence. This is so weird doing this like backwards. You wrote one sentence at a time, and then you came down here and wrote the other sentence, right? So what I want you to do now is I want you to write both sentences at the same time. So write I, I for the first sentence, I, and then I for the second sentence. And then write L for the first sentence and H for the second sentence. And then O for the first sentence and A for the second sentence. And then V for the first sentence and T for the second sentence. So you're going up, down, up, down, up, down, letter, 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 letter. Make sense? That is the equivalent of multitasking. That is why multitasking is not a good idea because it will, it will, um, elongate everything that you are doing. It will delay your progress. It'll delay your results. So one of the things, and me and Chris know this. So one of the things that we ended up doing was we took two weeks and during every single day, when we wake up until we went to bed, our entire focus was just filling up our Calendly. Now we were talking to probably about 200 people a month. These were one-on-one -on -one sessions. So you guys do the math, it's about 50 hours a week. So we were doing about 50 hours a week in just networking. Now that's a lot of people, right? In the first 60 days of our partnership, we netted, guys, we netted uh, $72,000. In the first 60 days, we made $72,000. So then I thought, oh my gosh, there is something here to this networking. And we did this, we continued this for probably about four or five months. Now, here's where the iterations part comes into play. This was how mine and Chris's, Chris's business started. At the first of the year of uh, this year, going into this year, we had this idea. We're like, man, we can't, we, we know that we have to continue growing our network. We have to continue building our relationships, but this is not the highest and best use of our time. This is not the best way to do it anymore. There is a proven concept right here. And we, we made a lot of money. We built our, our business in ways that we had not expected because of amazing relationships that um, were formed through all this networking, intentional networking that we were doing. Now, as you guys know, wholesaling for me at least was a grind. Let me see in the comments, how many people got into real estate so that they could buy properties? Let me see in the comments. I wanna know how many people got into real estate because they wanted to own properties. I'll wait, sometimes there's a little bit of a delay. Ken Wilson says me, dude, I know, I know I did. Francisco says me. Freddie, yes. That's why I got into real estate. I got into real estate because I wanted to buy properties. So how many of you are actually buying properties? How many of you got into real estate because you wanted to buy properties and you were like, man, well, I don't have any money. I don't have any connections. I don't have any deals. So at least... What I will do starting out is I will start out wholesaling because wholesaling in your head and in my head at the time will allow me the opportunity to go and buy some, buy some properties or not buy some properties. It will allow me to, um, I'm getting all scatterbrained here. This has been a crazy morning, but uh, wholesaling will allow me to replace my income. And once I start figuring out how to make 10 grand a month, then I can scale up and I can build that and I can go make 20 grand a month. And then when I'm consistently doing that, I'll go make 50 grand a month and then 80 grand a month and then hundred grand a month. And then, and then I'll have enough money where I can then go buy some property. Does this resonate with anybody? Cause this was me all day and I see it all day, every day from so many other people. For those of you guys who don't know, Alaska summers are extremely short. 
They are very, very, very short. Our, our, the, the peak of our summers are about three months long, maybe four months, depending. You can get a little chilly on month four. Our summers are extremely short. Our winters are really long. So when summer hits up here, I like to go out and I like to take my family camping and fishing basically as much as we can all summer long. I like to just be out, take the camper and just be out. I will go to the local libraries. I'll do all those. I'll work from wherever we've got internet. I'll make it work. But let's just get out because we spent all day or all uh, winter long um, hibernating. And so for the last the last couple of years, especially, wholesaling has been just such a grind. And I see everybody, you guys are in the comments. You guys are like, yes, yes. Anthony says, do not want to wholesale. Bro, I totally get it. I understand. I couldn't agree with you more. I could not agree with you more. I have spent the last, well, the last three and a half years wholesaling. And especially the, over the course of the last two summers, guys, we went camping and fishing. But you know what? My wife, after, after I drove the camper down there and parked the camper, my wife and kids would end up going and having all the fun. They would go hiking. They would go fishing. They would go do all the things. I was down there to do those things, but I didn't have time to do those things because I was overseeing a wholesaling business. I, all of my time was, you know, spent following up with sellers and then, uh, you know, how ha having my acquisitions, people, um, follow up with sellers and then they were sick or then they were traveling. And so then I had to step in and then I had to get caught up and do all these things. And it just turns into be this big mess that I, that's not why I got into real estate. Does anybody else resonate with this? Like wholesaling is such a grind. You can't go to Hawaii for two weeks and just, just be. There's very few people doing that. So one of the things that Chris and I ended up doing as we've iterated our business, we said, you know what? To hell with this. We are... We're not going to get distracted because what we were doing was we were, we were primarily wholesaling. We purchased, we purchased properties just absentmindedly as they've kind of landed on our lap. But, uh, our primary method was wholesaling. And so we made a goal. We completely dissolved our wholesaling business, like completely dissolved it. Anthony Krupa said, build your business around the lifestyle you want. Dude, hundred percent. You know what? For the longest time I thought that I was. I did not have the clarity then that I do now. And so to me, and probably a lot of you guys, you're probably juggling work and a family and trying to build a wholesaling business to get it to where you're successful enough where you got money, where you can go buy real estate. So one of the things that we ended up doing was we completely dissolved our wholesaling business September of last year. We dissolved our wholesaling business. We got rid of our acquisitions team, our dispositions team. I like everything. We got rid of everything. And we, we restarted from ground zero. Now, all those leads that we had on our CRM, all that kind of stuff, I said to hell with it. Chris and I cut ties. Now, for a lot of you guys who might be wanting to make this transition from wholesaling to buying properties, and we're gonna, I'm going to get into some cool shit here. For those of you guys wanting to make that separation, it's hard to let go of something like that. I get it. Because it's like, man, I've invested all this time, energy, and effort building these relationships, getting these leads, doing blah, 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 blah. I, I, I understand what that's like. I did 14 years in the Air Force. It's way easier to be like, oh, man, maybe I should just ride it out and then retire, and then I can start my real estate business. It's way easier to, to give that kind of, that's how most people kind of operate, as a matter of fact. You got so much time invested into something. It's like, oh man, do I really want to let this go? I can't let this go. So I can tell you guys, had I not let this go, had I uh, stayed in the Air Force and not gotten out and burned the ships, bet on myself, put myself into a, back myself into a corner basically, I would not be where I am right now. And I would have missed out on so much opportunity. Because there's no way that you can have one foot in and one foot out and scale and build and really do the things that's going to put you in a position to grow and to meet your full potential. I know this because I went through it.
So Chris and I completely dissolved our wholesaling business and we set out a goal and we said, all right, this quarter we're restarting. Now, here's the cool thing about each time you guys restart, here's something that to keep in mind. Each time that you restart your business, you're not restarting from ground zero. You're not restarting from square one again. That's what's really important to remember. You're starting from experience. So in just fourth quarter alone, just three months ago, we purchased, we, we, we set out a goal to purchase 50 doors. We ended up purchasing 63 doors that will net, guys, that will net, that will net. Let me repeat that again. That will net us $50,000 a month. When most people set out to do something, they don't really have clarity. I can't tell you how important it is to have clarity on what it is you're actually trying to do. We wouldn't have been able to go do that if we were half in and half out. If we were like, man, uh, do we really want to give up? We've been wholesaling the last 18 months almost. Do we really want to give all of it up? Maybe we should just buy more of our own leads. Maybe we should we we wouldn't have been able to do the things we're that we're doing right now. We would have been able to completely pivot and have new opportunities created because our oppor our, our lens. Think about it like this. Like you guys remember in the movie National Treasure with Nicolas Cage? You remember when they're looking for the treasure and they come across these glasses and these glasses have like uh different uh, lenses on them that allow him to see different things because of the lenses? You like lift it up and like he's got like blue and then you can look at him through the red filter. And then when you look at him through a red and blue filter, like you see something completely different. So <clears throat> it's kind of the same thing when you, when you're wanting to make these changes, when you're iterating in your business, but you can't seem to let go of other shit. You keep yourself looking at the filter of opportunity through those lenses. That's so cool. Look at that. Boom. That's badass. And that's where your mindset goes. When you set out a goal and you're like, hey, I want to make $10,000 a month. The window of opportunity that you are looking through, the lens that you are looking through is $10,000 a month opportunities. That is how you see the world. When that is your sights, because you have it in your head that, hey, I, I'm not somebody who can go make hundred thousand dollars a month. I need to figure this out and I need to just, I'm just trying to get 10 grand a month. Guys, I get that. I have been there. But setting out 10 X goals is so much better because it puts you in a position to have to see and create things. When you, when you, when you set out a goal to make $10,000 a month, that is I, Ken, Ken Wilson in the comments, you, you threw a couple glasses and a magnifying glass in there. I love that. When you set out a goal and you sell, you tell yourself, I'm just trying to figure out how to make $10,000 a month. You miss $100,000 a month opportunities. Let me say that again. When you set out goals to make 10 grand a month, you miss $100,000 a month opportunities because you have $10,000 glasses on in which you are seeing opportunity through. So when you go talk to somebody, when you jump into a zoom or when you get on Facebook, think about it like this. Let's say metaphorically, you guys were all, we were all, let's say we were all in a big building. We were on the 52nd floor and on this 52nd floor, you're walking down the hall and on your right, you got the snack machines, you got the soda machines. And then immediately after that, we've got this big conference room. This big conference room is so big. It'd probably be, you know, what, uh, what they use in Star Wars when everybody kind of gets around like these big, this, this big table can hold thousands of people. Okay. And it's this big circular table. And we're all, all of us right now are all sitting in this big circular table. 
the person conducting the meeting is going by each individual. He's like, what do you have? What do you need? Cool. Gary, what do you have? What do you need? Ben, what do you have? What do you need? Steve, what do you have? What do you need? Anthony, what do you have? What do you need? And this is your opportunity to say something. This is your opportunity to use your voice and everybody is listening. You have everybody's attention. And what ends up metaphorically happening is you either, one, you don't say anything and you miss that opportunity. Or two, you're in a room with people of all calibers, all experiences, people that are just getting into real estate and people that are making seven figures a week in real estate. And you have an opportunity to use your voice and to express what you have and what you need or where you can be of service. Or just tell somebody what your goals are. But because your filter of opportunity, the glasses that you have on, you have $10,000 a month glasses on. When you're put in a situation where people are like, Jesse, what do you have? What do you need? And the first thing out of your mouth is, hey guys, what CRM are you guys using? What list should I skip trace? Which dialer should I use? Are you guys texting or cold calling? Does anybody have a script? Now, I'm not downplaying those things. Those things are obviously very, very important. But those are also $10,000 a month questions. So you'll spend 30 days, maybe 60 days, maybe even more just trying to find a CRM. And then you'll find another 30 day. You'll do another 30 days, you know, trying to find a dialer. And then you'll spend another two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, trying to find the right market and the right list to skip trace. And maybe you're jumping on some Zooms in the meantime and you're making some phone calls and doing all these things. Before you know it, that's how you get six months deep into this. And you're no better off than you were. Let me give you some really good advice here. I want you guys to write this down. Focus on the result and not the process. Write that down. I'm going to repeat it one more time. Focus on the result and not the process. I had an individual reach out to me on Messenger. Uh, I think it was yesterday. Yesterday or the day before. And... He's like, dude, how are you, how, what did you do? How, did, how are you making 50,000? How did you generate $50,000 a month in passive? This isn't wholesaling. Like this is passive income. How did you do this? And this was a conversation him and I started having. I said, dude, most people focus on the process. If you're being truly honest with yourself right now, if I was to tell you, hey, I need you to go buy a house today. If you're being truly honest with yourself, most people are probably going to say something like, all right, cool. Um, or if you're, or I, I like to use this scenario too, because this really puts perspective on things. This really puts the heat on things. If your wife and kids or husband and kids or parents or friends or whatever, somebody close to you, I'm going to use my wife and kids as an example. If my wife and kids were kidnapped and held at gunpoint and the gunman said, Jesse, the only way that you get your wife and kids back again today is if you move on a deal today. If you buy a property today. Here's what most people would do in that type of situation. Under that type of duress, they will go skip trace a list. They might even get into Facebook first and ask, hey guys, this is what's going on. What list should I skip trace? And they'll still ask, what dialer are you using? And that is a perfect example of how people get caught up in the process. And people stay in that process, myself included at one point. I was so, that's how I figured all this stuff out because I was so caught up in the process of things that once I understood that what I was after 
I wasn't focusing on what the result was that I wanted. I was focusing on the process of something and that's where I stayed. And because that's where I stayed, I didn't see the traction that I wanted. I didn't see the momentum that I wanted. I wasn't making the money that I wanted. Because every single day, my focus is the result that I wanted was to buy a property. But my day-to-day -day habits, the things that I was doing, was focused on sifting a list or training a VA. Now, again, I'm not saying those things aren't important. I'm not saying that, that you don't eventually need things like that. What I'm trying to communicate to you guys is how I made $50,000 a month. What if I told you I don't have a VA? What if I told you I don't have lists? I don't have an acquisitions team. What if I told you Chris and I, it was just him and I, we made this decision that we're going to go buy 50 doors. We completely dissolved everything. And when I started focusing on the results that I was after and not focusing on the process, everything went like this. There's only two things that you need to go buy a property. Maybe some of you guys watching have heard me talk about this before, but throw it in the comments for those of you guys who do know. There's two things that you need in, 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 to go buy a property. What are those two things? There's only two things that's actually keeping you from doing a deal. It's not having a list. It's not having a dialer. Terry hit the nail on the head. He said seller and money. Technically right. You need money and you need a deal. That's it. Those are the only two things. You solve those two problems, you can go buy as many properties as you want. So what is skip tracing a list or having to figure out how to go and build a wholesaling business have to do with I need to get money and I need to get a deal. That's it. Those are the two things that Chris and I solved. I'll tell you exactly what we did. We hired an operations manager. That was our first hire. We hired an operations manager and we ended up bringing on a couple of other of our friends who are amazing and loving and wonderful individuals. So glad that we met them and they go raise capital. So I'm just buying properties from wholesalers and I brought people into my business to go raise the capital for it, to help us raise the capital. That's it. That's the secret sauce right there, guys. And the cool thing about this is that we're also paying ourselves. We're paying ourselves now money. We're paying ourselves. We have a $10,000 minimum acquisitions fee that we take on this. So with every property that we're buying, because I know a lot of people are like, well, I need to get into wholesaling because I need, I need like now money. I need to get into this now. I don't need long-term money right now. I need like some now money. That's why people get into wholesaling. Same thing. That's why I started. But then when I started focusing on the result that I was after and not getting caught up in the process, you start solving for those problems. I can't do that with a $10,000 lens on my face. I can't do that wearing $10,000 a month glasses. I have to put my $100,000 a month glasses on. So the cool thing about this whole thing is, guys, is that not only are we making $50,000 a month in passive income, I'm giving myself a minimum $10,000 a month acqui or $10,000 acquisitions fee, plus I'm gatoring my own deals. So if I've got $2,000 in EMD, I'll go put $5,000 on it, or I'll, 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 put e I'll put two grand down and I'll pay myself $5,000. So I just made three grand on my own properties. So even if you only went and bought two properties a month, starting out, if you set out a goal of just purchasing two properties a month, and maybe you gator your own deals, maybe you go borrow money to gator your own deals and you split that money just to get you started. What would that do for you? How easy would this be? What would that, what would your 2024 look like if you made this pivot? 
Terry says that would be 30,000 a month. Guys, how much would your life change? How much would your circumstances change? If you can make 20, 30, 40, 50,000 dollars a month actively and passively by just focusing on one thing. That's what our mentorship teaches. It teaches all of this stuff. I give you guys the exact blueprint that we're using, that we're doing. So I wanted to jump in here real quick and share it. Again, this is exactly what I'm doing, man. But you have to get very, very clear. It starts with having very clear and well-defined goals. Francisco, who is here, he um, was part of a bonus goal setting Zoom that we did last Thursday. Probably one of the best Zooms, not only that I've ever done on goal setting, but that I've ever been in, that I've, that I've ever attended. It was extremely good. Would you agree, Francisco? Dude, that was a fire goal setting Zoom. It was really, really, really good. And this is this is this is the growth code 2.0 guys. This is what we are focusing on this year. We're focusing on showing people how to escape the grind. Oh, Francisco, you're awesome, bro. Thank you. He says you blew my mind. Dude. Everything this this entire um this entire mentorship, dude, is basically everything that I know. I'm not holding back anything. Hopefully, you guys on this live, hopefully you guys don't feel like I'm holding back anything. I, I'm going to give you guys the playbook. Telling you guys exactly what I did. So I'm really excited. We got some really big goals and things that we're wanting to do and people are wanting to help out. We have um, had an amazing uh, meeting last night on our cohort. And dude, to see the progress that everybody is making is just absolutely phenomenal. It is really just, it, it's the most humbling and it's the, it's the neatest thing because everything that we're doing, it, and anybody can do, anybody can do this. But again, it comes back to mindset, it comes back to iterations, it comes back to community, it comes back to thinking about things differently, understanding things differently, setting goals appropriately, structuring your day differently, putting yourself into the millionaire mindset. When shit like this comes up, when you have things that come up in your life, when your dishwasher is broken, when your car has a check engine light, when these things inevitably happen because that's just life, I implore you, I challenge you. Instead of putting yourself in a position like, oh my gosh, how are we going to afford that? And I know the way that I said that, it sounds light, but I get it. I understand I mean, you guys can go see how much I was making in the military. I wasn't making shit, especially for having spent 14 years. I wasn't making nothing, man. So to have a bill like that come up a couple years ago, I understand what that feels like. So I'm not making light of it in any way, shape, or form. But what I'm saying is when you see things like that subconsciously, you have those $10,000 a month glasses on whether you realize it or not. So having clarity on that will help you guys start to consciously and intentionally and cognitively remove those $10,000 a month glasses and start putting on $100,000 a month lenses. Because when you have conversations with people, when you jump into a Zoom with people, when you post on Facebook, when you go to live events, you don't realize it, but your $10,000 a month lenses are on. So just like metaphorically speaking, when I had you guys kind of think and pretend like you were in this big conference room with all these other people and you have an opportunity to say something, to share something, to bring about more opportunity, business relationships. And the thing that comes out of your mouth is, well, what CRM are you guys using? You're in an opportunity, you have an opportunity where you're talking with people on how to do $100,000 a month opportunities. But the conversation we're having is about what CRM are we using or what list we're skip tracing. Does that make sense? So we need to remove those lens. We need to focus on what is the result that we're actually after. And when you can focus on the result that you're after, 
your mind does this really neat thing where it starts to find the quickest ways in, uh, to achieve that. Dude, Rex Shippy is in here. Rex, thank you, bro. Rex is going through our uh, cohort right now. He is one of my very good friends. Um, uh, he's an Idaho brother. He's buying a ton of properties. Please go reach out. Rex is one of those individuals that you guys want to know. Rex is one of those individuals that you need to have in your Rolodex. He is a killer. If you guys need help at all, if you guys want to, if you guys want to get into this stuff, go, 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 go reach out to Rex. Say Rex, Hey, I want to go buy some properties. How can we, how can we do some cool stuff together? How can we grow together? How can I buy some properties with you? Go reach out to Rex. Thank you, brother. Thank you for being here. And I appreciate everybody else. Jennifer, your dishwasher and check engine light literally both happened to you last month. Oh my goodness. Dude, you know what? When this guy left, I told him, I was like, dude, not only, not only was I happy to write him a $200 check for 15 minutes worth of work, but I was, I had never been so grateful that I didn't have to hand wash dishes again because I, I, man, I can't even tell the last time. I don't even know if I've hand washed dishes since me and my wife were married. We usually hand wash them and throw them in the dishwasher. Well, you know, get all the food off and then throw them in the dishwasher. I don't know that I've had to use a, we we don't even own a dishwasher rack like to have the dishes dry from. So I had to load them back up into my busted dishwasher uh, so they could dry in there. But guys, things happen, man. Life is hard. Life is hard. Business is hard. And one of the things that I love to help people focus on is gaining clarity about what is the result that they're actually after and helping them build a very customized blueprint to help them achieve that. As you can tell, either you're going through this or you're seeing people go through this where they're doing the things right now that aren't even what they wanna be doing. They're not even doing things that are in in line with their avatar. Their daily habits are not consistent. Neither are they, uh, or nor are they the right thing. So I'm really excited. If you guys are finding yourself in the grind, stop it. Stop it. Reach out to me. Reach out to Carlin. Ask about ask about our our upcoming mentorship. This is this is absolutely life-changing stuff. I've never heard anybody break it down like this before. I've never even heard people talk about it like this before. But it is literally that easy. Let me know what I can do to help. What is the cost? of staying in the exact same position week after week and month after month. I know what that cost is because I've been there. I know what it feels like to be like, man, I need to change something. Something needs to change. In order for you to have something you never had, you have to do something you've never done. And then the only way you can do that is with different information, with more information. This is my passion. This is what I love doing. Brandon, he's Brandon says, don't tell me to reach out while I'm grinding at the gym. <laughs> Brandon, it's the middle of a work day, dude. What are you over at the gym? Oh yeah, that's right. You're in the air force. You're in the chair force. You can go to the, you can go to the gym during the day, bro. Enjoy it, man. Enjoy it. But thank you guys for being here just, just, real quick while I'm wrapping up. If anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll leave a couple minutes for some Q and a, if you guys have any questions, um, you know, please let me know. If you guys have any questions about who to get in contact, how to get in contact with us, how to find out more about the upcoming uh, cohort and the mentorship that we have, um, you know, please let me know. I just, I, I simply, this again, this is what I love doing. Zach Bush, you just, just in time for the end. Oh, well, luckily it's recorded, bro. Thank you for jumping in though. Zach Bush is another amazing individual. Um, Zach Bush is doing some really amazing things. He actually just did a very big iteration in his business this week as well. He's going through our current core right now. Zach, I'm really excited to see what um, what you end up doing this year, man. This is going to be awesome. So thank you for the opportunity to work hand in hand with you and um, make this a very monumental year for for everybody, for all of us. I love you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, no, Pansy, this is not the mentorship you're on the list for. Nope. Um, no, that's 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 kind of a, a lower ticket thing. That's for that that's specifically for people who um, don't really have any information. Um, 
Alexa Jenkins says, Tyler and I are so excited. So just to be clear, guys, I know you guys have reached out to me about something else. This is, this is something different. What I'm talking about right now is something different. We have two different, we have two different mentorships. So Pansy, you're on the list for the other mentorship. This is not the mentor. The, the one that I'm talking about today is not the one that you're on the list for. Um, Zach, dude, anytime, bro. Anytime. I'm so grateful to do it. Like I said, guys, this is where my passion is. I love real estate. Clearly, real estate has changed my entire life. It's changed everything for my family. It's allowed me to do the things that I want to do and to be the person that I want to become. And I hope, it is my hope and prayer that it does the exact same for you guys. And if there's anything that I can do to be an asset and a resource for you, if there's anything that I can do to help you shorten that learning curve, please let me know. Because after I, I'll tell you guys what, man, after I was looking at last, um, Mindy says, thank you. Now I have to go get my new glasses. <laughs> yes, Mindy. Yes, man. Yeah, that, that's, that's the big thing right there. That's the big thing. Once you're, once you're cognitive that you had the wrong glasses on, I mean, it's crazy how fast things can go if with the right glasses and you're having the right information, you're having the right conversations with people and you're intentional with it. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate you. It is my pleasure and privilege to be here. I, again, I love real estate, but this, this right here, like seeing people win, helping people win. That's where my true passion is. That's what I love doing. Carlin and I both. So thank you guys very much for being here. Um, if there's, again, if you guys have any questions about our upcoming uh, mentorship, please let me know. We are filling up seats. Uh, I'd have to get with Carl and I don't know. I think we maybe have a handful of seats left. I don't, I don't know what the exact number is right now. But if you guys are interested in pivoting in your business and just getting for out from underneath the grind, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wholesaling. I'm saying if you're wholesaling because you want to buy properties, then there's an issue. And being able to see and experience what I just went through last quarter and how this is going to change not only my business, but the business uh, model for, for everybody who comes through my course is... Awesome. It is really awesome. You don't have to do this. You don't, you certainly don't have to do this alone, nor should you. That is the slowest way to do anything. When it comes to your personal development and seeing those glasses, sometimes seeing those glasses is getting the answers from somebody. The fastest, I, 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 um, I, I saw a video or a reel or something from Alex Hormozzi recently and he talked about when he first got started, how every single cent he was pouring into, he was going and, and getting um, just these, these big mentors. And he was paying for all sorts of shortcuts that allowed him to just, phew. I used to be the, I used to be the person that was like, oh man, let me try to figure this out. I need to figure this out on my own. And dude, what, what a long road that was. What a super long road that was. As soon as I started paying for coaching, paying for mentorships, um, dude, I just saw my business just do this because you have to get around people that are doing bigger things, who see things differently, who see reality differently than you do. And when you do that, guys, you will, you will put yourself in such an elevated position. The way that you see yourself will change. The way that you see others will change. The way that you see opportunity will change. The way that you see money making activities will change. The way that you leverage your time will completely and drastically change. So that's something I challenge you guys with this year. Be very intentional with getting around the right crowd. Uh, we're going, we're coming up on an hour guys. So thank you very much for being here again. I appreciate you. I hope you guys have an amazing freaking Thursday. This has been awesome. Uh, Zach says, that's what I was doing and was focusing on for most of the last cohort. Now I'm switching to buy full mode, dude. I think, th I think it's way more profitable, man. <laughs> being, being a buy and hold investor as opposed to wholesaling. It's a way more profitable business model. Um, 
like I said, there's so many different things that you can that you can do with it. I mean, Chris, uh, stroke of luck that Chris, my business partner, just also happens to be, uh, you know, he owns a TC business. So we've been really in a very fortunate position. We've been able to expedite a lot of the things that go into a, a buy and hold business and things that need to be overseen and, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but dude, I, yeah, like you said, you know, the, there's two things you need to go buy a property guys. You need a deal and you need money. The answer is not wholesaling. Now, if you want wholesale, great. That's great. You can make tons of money wholesaling. I'm making tons of wholesalers money right now. But if you got in here because you want to be a buy and hold investor, reach out to Carl and I. Let's give you some more information on how you can get started and start changing things this year. It's only January 4th. We are really in just the beginning stages. Let's make this a very fruitful and profitable month, guys. I love you, and I'm so grateful for you guys. Thank you for being here. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. We'll see you guys soon.